Hey guys and welcome back to the Real Film Podcast, where each season we tackle a different topic in film, TV or gaming. In this series we're delving into worlds created by a games developer From Software, and in this episode we're chatting about From's latest game, Sekiro. I'm your host Matt and I'm joined by Rob, Sam and Guff. Hiya. Hello. Hiya. Everyone alright? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't ready for that impromptu introduction of all of us. I could just, I could hear the, the overlapping voices just happening in the chat, and I was like, "Oh uh, God!" Oh, uh, what, what did you want? Did you want an individual introduction? I thought that's what we were getting. Yeah, right. tough. I mean, that makes that's it sound tough. like it's a, uh, it's. Wait, what's the thing? Democracy, but really, it's a dictatorship, and we all, we <laughs> oh, all it's know definitely that. Supremely in a mat, yeah. We all know that. exactly, exactly. Um, just get into it. So you're a ninja, you're a shinobi. How dare you, I was about to say, you, all the, <laughs> yeah, all the shinobi. like, weeboos are going after us. Yeah, is it the first one where you, it's not character creation, I, th- I would think, I think. Oh yeah, god, I don't know yeah, what Demon's of course Souls it is. is but, yeah. Pardon? I don't know what Demon's Souls is, but yeah, of Dark Souls it is, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's the first one, so you play as a, I wonder why they made that decision, I wonder if suppose, because it's, I don't know, I have a few options, I've seen isn't it? lazy. <laughs> yeah, from what I've seen, from what I've seen and played, I don't feel like there's a reason it couldn't be character creation. Remind me at the moment, anyway. I suppose the combat is very like you've got to play it the way the game wants you to play it. Whereas Dark Souls and yeah, Bloodborne, you can kind of play it in slightly different ways. Yeah, that's very true. I suppose you're a more defined it's the mechanics, yeah, the game character sort of thing. Whereas, I like know. maybe maybe it's just like because we've obviously talked in previous episodes about how. Um, how the story is, and obviously how Bloodborne and Dark Souls have very much kind of told the story their way. Maybe they just wanted, maybe they just wanted sort of more linear a story. Yeah, that's maybe fair it was like storytelling purposes. They were just like, let's give it a main character that's you know got a voice and <coughs> got um one clear arc and things like that, and and a history and things like that. Because because uh, I think that's the beauty of the other games, isn't it? You can just be anyone, but I suppose with this one, it's like, uh, like you say, not not any particular way that you don't have to be. But maybe it's just maybe they just wrote a story and was like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it that way. Yeah, because yeah, so you're a shinobi called Wolf, um, and your duty is to protect the divine heir Kuro, um, and people want his blood and stuff to save an empire that's going into ruin kind of thing. I think that's... I'm right, the uh, the divine blood, as they call it, that's um, gives you immortality, right, doesn't it? That's the point of the game. Yeah, right. so you as playing as wolf do get the divine heirs kind of blood, which means you can, like, resurrect yourself when you die, which is a cool new, like, mechanic in the game. Um, so obviously if you die, you get, like, one resurrection um, to give it another go. But then that does have implications on the wider game as well, which is quite cool. Um, but how much those implications actually do change the story, I, I'm, I don't really know. I, I don't think it really changes it too much. Because I know there's a bit where you speak to a character and it sounds like there's two very different options, <laughs> but they both go the same way anyway. So who knows how much the resurrection actually has to play on it and stuff. We should say that um, none of us have finished the game yet. Is that right? No. Or know how it finishes. What? No, so I've played up to. I'm about to take on a boss. Well, I'm nearly about at the stage of taking on the boss called the Guardian Ape. Oh, I've um, not done it yet. No, I no, you'd I don't, it. no, I've not. I've not actually done it yet. I'm just before it. Um, but I don't actually know. I couldn't say at all how far into the game. I think that's about that halfway. Just is it? I think yeah, because I'm about the same point. Um, I'm, I've fought him a few times. I've not beaten, but. Yeah, I think it's about halfway. Yeah, I've I've like I've not fallen off it, but I've been playing a bit of Dark Souls because I want to get up to a point in that bit of live stream. So I've fallen off Sekiro, so I am worried for when I go back to it because I'd actually just started to get good at it. It's a change of pace, isn't it? Yeah, it is a bit of a change of pace, which I'll talk about in my segment. Um, Sorry, just on the topic of change of pace, I'm currently playing. I'm currently juggling. Animal Crossing and Doom Eternal, so don't come at me with change of pace. <laughs> I was like I'm trying to kick people's like Tom Nook's head in. <laughs> to be fair, I want to kick his head in. Robin Bastard, isn't he? No, do you know what I don't like? Do you know the woman that takes over oh, she's from him bitch. doing the morning announcement, Isabel? Yeah, she's an idiot. Oh, I'm, not, I'm, not that, I'm not that far in yet. 
I don't like Isabel because uh, of the time she's kicked my ass on Smash Brothers. Uh, okay. <laughs> No, she's she's really annoying. And like every time you log on, it's like here's a morning announcement, and every day she's just like, no news today. And I'm like, what's the point? Cheers, <laughs> sure. yes, thanks for that. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, should we talk about Sekiro? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Is that how you say it? Am I saying it right? Sekiro, yeah. Sekiro, Sekiro. Ah, uh, Sekiro, isn't it? Probably. That's how they say it in the game, isn't it? That's what they call it. Yeah. Say Sekiro. It depends if you listen yeah. to it with the uh, English dub or not. Yeah, sure. yeah I'm, I'm listening to it in Japanese, so do I, because I'm cultured. Yes. <laughs> how, do, how do they say it? I'm not doing that. I'm not no, doing that. Yeah, we're not, yeah. not going <laughs> to that podcast. Uh, Rob, do you want to kick us off? Uh, oh, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what are we doing? Good one. Animal Crossing, is it? Podcast. <laughs> Right, uh, my segments. Uh, we know that uh, from software games are notoriously difficult games uh, and lend themselves to rage quitting and putting the games down and never picking them up again. Um, if you look at like the the trophy kind of like breakdown on PlayStation, you can see like a percentage of people that achieve each trophy, and there's like a shocking amount of people who don't achieve. Um, trophies like really early on in all all those games it's like 50 percent or something of people who don't beat like the second boss because obviously they buy it they find it too hard and they don't bother doing it yeah i can't remember the exact figures but if you look at them it's quite interesting compared to like other games um so you kind of expect Sekiro to be difficult but kind of my question to you guys is is it too hard have they gone like too far with this because i i find I found it at points. It took me so long to get to grasp with the combat system, which is um, a parry-based system now, rather than kind of sword and shield or uh, kind of a quick aggressive way. It's kind of defensive, but also it's very counter-attacking. Whereas the other two games are kind of different, and the other two games, like we said before, you can kind of uh, tailor it to the way you play games a little bit. You kind of got to play it the right way, but you can kind of mess around with how you play it but Sekiro is like you've got to play it this way or you will die there's no other way um but there are moments this is a, this is the first one that's made me genuinely very angry and I felt that when I've died it's been unfair I feel like in Dark Souls <laughs> when you die it's like I know what I did wrong there it's annoying but I know what I did wrong Sekiro sometimes have been like I don't know how to do that genuinely don't know how to do it and um Another point, which is, is it too hard, is there are a lot of fake-out... I know Resurrection is a big theme of the game. There's a lot of bosses with a lot of fake-outs, which really piss me off quite a lot. Where they've got hidden health bars, you kill them, and there's a, oh, back again. Oh, now I've carried my head around. Oh, <laughs> here we go. Um, is that is that a bit of a piss take? When you beat a boss and you think it's got one health bar and it just comes back again? Probably, yeah. I think I think it does it. It does it with like Lady Butterfly quite early, and then you think that's a piss take, and then it does it with a few more bosses. You're like, can you just can you stop it now? Can you just give yeah, me I mean, I, I, just give me three health bars, and I know what I'm dealing with then. Yeah, it's like I know it does it with Guardian Ape. I think with Guardian Ape, it does have a story kind of impact for it, like a reason for it. Um, but yeah, Lady Butterfly is a bit like, why have you done that? That's just that is just to like go like, oh look. We've, you know, we've uh, we got you there, didn't we? Sort of thing. See, I, from my understanding of that boss, is it's like obviously the whole point with with Lady Butterfly is it's illusion based, like, and it's sort of like the introduction of illusions in that world. So I'd sort of argue that that is still sort of to serve the story. Um, the I, thing is, I don't really, I, I don't know if she comes back or not, but I'm kind of like, well, what's that about? <laughs> you know, mm. that there's a lot of. I, I hope it comes back anyway, because there's a lot of like subtext and stuff to all that that whole bit that it hasn't been explained yet in the game or hasn't even been like hinted at being explained at, at any point well, yeah because it's it, it, am i right in saying that's connected like lady butterfly specifically is connected to uh, wolf's past um, yeah yeah because she helped train him when he became a shinobi that's right isn't it like she was one of his teachers 
You kind of get that impression, yeah. Yeah. See, that's it. Like, that would have been... Hopefully, it is explored more further in the game. Obviously, this is... I bet there's people who've played it and completed it who've just been, like... That they're either listening to this going, no. <laughs> or, yeah. like, oh, you've got something to look forward to. Yeah, or you <laughs> wait and see, mate. You wait yeah. and see. Um, I don't know if Butterfly's explored a bit more, but that area gets explored a bit more later down the line yeah i mean i mean they've got to because it's such a big part of like the start of the game yeah. that mm-hmm. once you've defeated her you don't go back to for quite a while because the thing is as well the way the game's designed you could do all that bit before you've basically done anything else like lady butterfly can be your first boss if you do it in a certain order and then you've done that whole bit and then you probably don't come back to it for like 20 30 hours or something like that which seems like a bizarre way to set up a game um but to answer your question, Rob, well, to kind of go off on a point that I was thinking when you were talking, um, kind of something we said about Dark Souls and Bloodborne is like, yeah, they're tough games, but the things you can do to make it easier, you know, you can grind souls and go and level up. You can, you know, pick classes that are a little bit easier. You can level your weapons up, all that sort of stuff. Like, you can't do that with Sekiro because the way you level up is by defeating hard enemies because you get these things called prayer beads that are then used to give you, like, um, they they are used to level you up. Like you, you do get like attack points, are they called something like that, which yeah. you can also use to like level up, but which do come from just fighting normal en- enemies. But the main way to like level up is through like prayer beads, which you get only from defeating really tough enemies. Um, so there is that thing of you can't just you have to get good. As we had a whole conversation about, like there isn't any kind of that I've found anyway, any cheap way of just going, well, I'll go away and grind for a bit and, you know, get loads of souls and level up and come back sort of thing. Um, but in terms of the combat, that's something I want to go on to in my segment. So I will um, wait to kind of go on because I think the combat's pretty brilliantly designed, even if it is quite frustrating. Do you want to know something else I'm really mad about and I forgot? No summons. <laughs> There's no summons. There's not any in the game at all. As far as I'm aware, I mean, I've not had any. Te- yeah, yeah. I've technically, had. I guess the only one you could probably have is drunk, uh, the drunk jizz, oh, jizzle yeah, guy. Yeah. Like the guy who's sort of, he's probably about as much as you're gonna get. I True. Think. I, I think that um, to ju- I, I've got a point. Sort of again answering sort of the question you posed, but like, I mean, with that though, there is like that sort of. Um, so for anyone who doesn't know, there's like ninjutsu's, which are like. There's, like, all sorts of different things in the game you can do to help you out. There's, like, trick weapons. There's all sorts. But, yeah, ninjutsus are, like, one where it's, like, after getting a death blow on an enemy, like, a backstab, basically, you can, like, have an extra effect. Um, or, well, I don't think... I don't. You might have to correct me, but I don't know if they're all exclusively backstabs, but there's a particular one where you do a backstab and you can basically possess the enemy and then very... Um, for, like, a short amount of time, they are on your side... I wonder if, and though you can't really do them with bosses, I wonder if that's sort of like the payoff there. I know, like you're saying, like you don't get to. There's nothing like story because I, you know, I think you, I think it was you, Rob, that actually mentioned it in a previous episode. Where it was like summoning serves the story, like when you're fighting with Solaire or you're fighting with, like, for example, on Bloodborne. Like I recently fought Blood Starved Beast with, um, is it Alfred? Alfred, yeah, yeah. Like so, it's like things like that that really that really do help, but. I don't know this. This sort of leads me into like the answering of your question, though. Like, I think, I every time I've watched again, like like sort of everyone in this um, podcast, I've been watching uh, retry by RKG. That's their series. Um, Prepare to try. We've mentioned before. It's the same people that did that, um, but they're doing Sekiro at the moment. And I'm every time there is like a boss fake out or something like that. I'm just like, of course. Of course. And not in like a pessimistic way, but I'm just like, this is what FromSoft have always done. And this is sort of like how they push the... I think it's it's making it tougher and almost making making you go, how is this fair? I feel that takes you back to the first time Dark Souls games came out. Because people were asking the same questions. People were going, how is this fair? This is ridiculous. And you do just have to get good. <laughs> um, but I feel like taking this up a notch is just uh, they're constantly pushing the boat because again if it was sort of like the same sort of difficulty level as dark souls and things like that and i know the combat is different and that is a challenge in itself but if you didn't sort of add these like 
big fuck yous, <laughs> I think, that Dark Souls and FromSoft are a bit famous for. I think people, I think they become very samey. And don't get me wrong, I do think maybe there's a point where you go, what, what's their ceiling with that? Like, where, where do they stop doing that? Um, but, like, the piss take that's the Guardian Ape, I think that's genuinely a little bit hilarious how much of a piss take it is. I've not fought him. I'm coming from a completely... Yeah. <laughs> I'm completely You'll feel uh, different when you do it. Ex- yeah, yeah. But I am a bit like... Fair play from Soft. Fair play. Uh, Sam, go ahead. Well, I mean, the Sekiro kind of gives you the biggest F you like, right at the start of the game where they're just like... Uh, you're going to fight Ganichiro now. Uh, and mm-hmm. you know what? <laughs> He's solid. You don't know any of the shit as well, so good luck. Uh, I mean, the thing is, obviously, it's one of these, like, because I ended up, as part of the research for the segment I'm going to do in a bit, um, I was there's, there's like, things, there's some tropes in games where there are just bosses you can't win. Um, or at least it poses it as that way, and some people have found ways to do it. I mean, people have done it with, like, uh, like the first thing in Devil May Cry 5. I can't remember the boss's name. I'm looking at you, Guff, because I think you played this. Eh, whatever. Um, <laughs> the first boss you face in that is supposed to be, quote-unquote, unbeatable. Uh, I mean, technically, I guess with Bloodborne, the, when you first get out of the... Not even out of the clinic, when you get to that first kind of like beast thing, really beating it to death with your bare hands without having a weapon kind of seems intentional of the game that it is supposed to be a, a a plot device to like send you to the dream so you can do all that stuff so i think yeah so, sorry to interrupt it. i'm right in saying you get your first weapons from the dream don't you yeah yeah so you yeah. don't get anything you don't get anything unless you run past the beast go to the first lantern and then travel back to the dream that's the only other way i've seen people kind of circumnavigate that part of it do you get weapons anywhere else in bloodborne I mean, you pick them up but i think yeah you can pick them up is, yeah is I wonder if there's like a run of someone who's never gone to the dream. Because oh, is that yeah. possible? I mean, you, well, you'd have to to level up, wouldn't you? And no, but like, hey, there's Good people question. who've done mad runs on Dark Souls and they've yeah, been like I level suppose. one and stuff. Like, I wonder if I'm going to look that up, see if there's anyone I mean, who's never probably, gone to the dream. You probably could. Because I'm thinking about it. Yeah. In theory, like, the only time you probably ever have to go to the dream, and I don't even know if you have to, is when you just kind of pass through the area that the dream's based off. Oh, you would have to um, the last boss, go right? for the very end. Yeah, last boss. Oh, of course, yeah. I wonder if that... Uh, uh, have oh, a look. That's no, really curious. I'm going to Google that. I want to find out if anyone's done that, because yeah. that'd be amazing. But sorry, continue your point, sorry. No, Back to Sekiro. Yeah, it was, it's just that that um, that it does seem like it, it's very much gone to... Um, even after you've tried to learn this whole new combat system, which in itself is... It looks solid, so I'm looking forward to getting stuck into it because it looks like it's gonna be fucking tough as anything to actually uh sort of get used to um for them to have this kind of fuck you kind of moment um fighting the but also has anyone ever actually watched the video of what happens when you can beat ganichiro in that first step no no i've not actually i mean i presumed you would be able to if you're like one of those mental players do you want me to tell you what happens because i thought it i don't i wasn't a big fan of it does it ruin the story no not at all the whole game ends. No, well, see, that's the thing. It's not one of the... Like, with Devil May Cry 5, you beat the game if you beat that first boss. <laughs> Do you you, really? you win the game. If, yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, like... The thing is... The, fair the, play. The fair play, Capcom. Fair play. The designers didn't even program it that much. Literally, what happens, you kill the boss, it shows the title card... And then it shows a postcard which says they all live happily ever after. And then that's Brilliant. it. Brilliant. Oh, <laughs> that's Amazing. it. Because they'd be they so even, annoyed if you'd spent, like... 50 quid on that game and then you yeah. just beat the boss and it was oh, like oh no wait well I, I just want to I just want to prerequisite that there's no way the first playthrough of Devil May Cry you're beating that boss it's no. fucking like I played no, the I beginning mean, like, of it and I'm like that's mental it's... I mean like mad gamers yeah. though that are like pros the ones yeah. who spend like 50 minutes just like now nah, that the Batman games. in that that's like prep time yeah. they've like they've <laughs> like doing prep time they're like alright I'm about to go into this boss I've never fought it before I've never played the game before yeah. I need to go in and kick his ass straight yeah. away how do we do this <laughs> Well, that's the thing. So, essentially, what happens is you, you beat him, you do the death blows, um, and all the... Re- so, in the actual scene that happens, when you get beat, Genichiro does a slice, lops your arm off, and that leads to all that. All that really changes with this is that, like, there's probably one extra scene in the whole sequence where you're kind of stood up over him, and then a shuriken kind of comes out of nowhere, you turn to block it, and then he slices your arm off, and that's about it. 
bullshit. So, and then, do you know the person who picks up Kuro, the like little goblin y looking guy, it's assumed that he throws it. It doesn't even show him like putting some away or anything. It's just it's just literally right, carry on then. That's... Sam's well angry about this it was just, really yeah. obscure <laughs> potential it's thing just, that may or may not happen. If they would have included like even a little bit extra dialogue, I would have been like, that's a really cool kind of like payoff for someone who like the amount of effort you've got to go to to actually get to that point is mad. Like, nah, I think I think this is funny. a I think this is a, a Luke throwing the lightsaber argument all over again. This is like we wanted more, we waited for more, we wanted more. I Wait, worked so hard to get more of this. <laughs> it's just the idea of doing like, oh, he's we've waited all this time and he's just chucked the lightsaber away. I think because like <laughs> the idea of just a little shuriken coming out of nowhere and like distracted. I think that's funny, me. I think, that's, <laughs> I think, I think it's funnier funny. that someone worked really hard. To beat Genichiro the first time you meet him, and you get fuck all for it. That's true. You, <laughs> yeah, do, you do literally answer. get nothing for it, so it's kind of like. Oh, well. I think that's really funny. I don't know. Wait, what? Which ep- Sorry, I'm derailed now on the start. What? What are people arguing? Last about? Jedi, mate. Oh, oh, right. Okay, yeah. I thought it was like OG ones. <laughs> it's always oh, Last no. Jedi. Yeah. It's always Last Jedi. I thought it was like in five or something. I was like, what? Nah, I'm right. shocked off. All right. Anyway, yeah, uh, it's it's hard, isn't it? So I'm speaking from. A- it is to be. Cool. Yeah, to be fair, I like like bang my head against the wall for quite a while with it when I first started playing it. That's why you didn't get anywhere. I knew, what, I knew what I was like supposed to be doing. I just like couldn't like master it like at all. And again, like Rob said, it's not like you can adapt the way that you're playing it. So like if in Dark Souls, you know good at parrying, it's like, well, you're not going to parry then. You're going to get good at dodging or blocking or anything like that and it's not all like you go well I'm not good at dodging so I'm just going to tank it I'm going to put loads of strong armour on and just weather the hits and get in when I can it's like it, it's it, there's only one way to play that game and it's like you've either got to play it our way or kind of yeah get gone sort of thing but I don't feel like that's a, f- a failing of the game as such I, it just feels like you know, it probably will alienate even more people than probably like Dark Souls and Bloodborne do and stuff like that. Um, because, yeah, there was one, it wasn't even a boss, it was like a mini boss and he's kind of stood in the middle of this square and there's all these other enemies kind of around him and you have to kind of take them down one at a time because that's a cool aspect as well to this, that there's like stealth aspects to mm-hmm. um, this as well, which I think is like a cool addition, um, which you've never had in like, I mean, you can like creep up on people and backstab them, but then as soon as you do that, the fight's breaking out. Whereas this, you can kind of like backstab someone, drop back into some bushes, sneak around, do all this stuff. <laughs> so, um, can we insert the clip of that guy doing um, when he's talking about surfing that wave? Because you sounded an awful lot like that then. <laughs> Trap down, whoop ha! Take a, get a center. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what that reference is. I'm going to send I'll you find, the clip. Yeah, send it, send it me. I'm sure it's good. <laughs> um, but yeah, you have to do that. And there's probably like. A good maybe eight, nine enemies that you have to kill before... I mean, you could just run down to the boss guy straight away and try and fight him, but you're just going to get swamped by everyone else if you do that. Plus, bow and arrow guys who are, like, really annoying in Sekiro. Um, so I just spent ages, like... Because there's people that see you as well and then alert the others, and it was just a hard thing. And then even after you, even if you kill them all, you then have to go and take on this guy, and you need two death blows to kill him. And it's just like, and then as soon as I got down to him, he just kept kicking my ass. And I was just like, I can't, like, <laughs> I don't think can't I'm going to be able to, I can't even. I bet that, that was like, even all the rest of the, like, I think after I got past that point, I've been like frustrated by other bits, but that was the bit where like, I nearly quit. And that's someone that knows he's this like series of games and how to play them and has played a lot. So I can't imagine someone who hasn't been through that just going, oh, do you know what? I'll, do you know who you say they've never been interested in the other ones, but do you know, like you said, Guth, you never really played Dark Souls, but you're really into gothic horror, so you're like, I'm going to try Bloodborne because it's that kind of style. Like, say you're into it as like Japanese culture, and we're like, oh, I'm going to try this game, and then you just get absolutely battered. It would just, yeah, it would be, I think it would put off so many more people. I, I think, did you ever feel, well, I've got two sort of comments about that, but like, um, did you not ever feel... Well, I'll tell you what, I'll make my comment first. I think like there's enough games out there that do a very similar thing. Like A lot of people have sort of compared Sekiro to Tenchu. And I've never played Tenchu, but you know, there's a lot of like sort of ninja, shinobi sort of games that exist that obviously 
do it in many different ways. Like, you know, you've got a very sort of imperial Japan supernatural thing in Onimushu, and then you've got, like, Tenchu, you've got Ninja Gaiden, or Gaiden, whichever you pronounce it. But it's like you've got, like, all sorts of different games that... Um, do that same thing with like Japanese culture the same way there's like a lot of games about werewolves there's a lot of RPGs that are like about dragons and stuff I think there's an argument to be said <coughs> like you know from you go to From Software for a certain type of game and I think like like we've said before like it can be alienating the first time you're playing because they are so hard I think it's like um I think it's sort of just what they do. I think it's like it's it's a, once you're roped into the challenge, you you probably enjoy it and you probably enjoy the challenge. But I think to sort of then say like it's a bit alienating based on that. I think it's as alienating as the other from software games if you want to look at it that way. But that's what what I was going to ask you sort of based on what you said was, did you never feel that way about the other from soft games when you first started? Like when you very first, you know. I don't, I don't wait. Which one of you has had it without watching Prepare to Try? Was who was it that? Yeah, Rob. Did you not like you said you felt pretty much that way before yeah. you like you knew what it was like? Yeah, I like got that blood ball. Yeah, sorry, that was I it. Was, yeah, it so was like, impo- I, like, I, I didn't. I didn't get it. I just didn't get it at all. I was like, <laughs> I, just, yeah. I was. I remember like reading reviews back because it's it was pretty soon after I just got on PS4, so I was like looking at what games to buy and like obviously The Last of Us, Bloodborne. Uh, I think Destiny just come out as well, so they're all these like big games. So I kind of got them all, and they were like Bloodborne's this gothic horror, and I was like, that sounds amazing, and like the artwork is really cool, and it looks amazing, and I just I didn't know how to play it because mm-hmm. it's very like you think of most games as a quite a clear kind of tutorial, where it's like this is how you play the game, this is exactly what you need to do to play this game, but these games don't do that. They're just like attack is R one. There you go. I've I've had it. <laughs> Yeah, but that's what I mean, like, but I think, I wonder if, like, we, Sekiro will just be viewed the same way, retrospectively, do you oh, know what I mean, yeah. like, because it's, obviously, the, the the others have got a bit more tenure, well, yeah, I think t- because Sekiro's the newest one, I wonder if that'll sort of, like, as it becomes more prevalent. Yeah, to be fair, when I, when I put the segment down, I was at a point where I was banging my head against the wall, and something has kind of clicked the last few times I've played it. And I have been sort of getting through areas without dying and stuff, so it's probably just. Yeah, I do. I do think when it started clicking for me, that was like probably more satisfying than when it clicked for me when I was playing Dark Souls. Mm. I feel I, like once I got it, I was like, oh, "This feels amazing!" Like when you pull off a string of like deflects in Sekiro, it just feels so satisfying. It's like cracking it. Yeah, it it does. It just feels like so good. That's and that's why I reckon they've done it. That's why I reckon it's all again like just upper tier because yeah. it's that thing of. I think if they but, had just made it, if if it had been Bloodborne two, like essentially game engine wise, because I think you know as again like game uh, story wise, you could go. This probably maybe belongs in somewhere a bit more aggressive, like so Bloodborne, like someone just attacking and things like that. Um, I think. It'd be less satisfying, but like I said, I, I'm 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 very looking forward to to playing it because of how solid it looks. Um, should we segue into my segment? Right. So my segment um, quite nicely like leads on from Rob's um, as a kind of hinted is is to do kind of semi with like the difficulty of the game and that sort of thing, um, and. It kind of links into a little bit what I was saying last episode about Bloodborne and how, you know, it kept certain elements of, like, the Dark Souls series, but, um, you know, redefined the combat and built it around the world, and the combat change had... Um, not had narrative implications, but was driven by the narrative and the world that it was in. Um, and same again with, like, Sekiro, like... I don't think anyone. I think you know. You can say that from have like perfected a style of game. Like everyone tries to copy it, both in terms of like combat and also like the difficulty to reward um, sort of level. And like Sekiro, like again shows that you know they've got enough tricks. They're not like up their sleeves to like make it a new thing, and you know keep stuff familiar enough um, so that. 
people that have played the series are going to have that level of familiar, familiar, familiarity with it. Um, but also it's offering enough that there's still so much to explore and learn. I think like Sekiro goes even further than Bloodborne for me because like I'm saying this and I'm complimenting it, for me there are a few too many elements to try and juggle in Sekiro and keep your head round a bit because, you know, as I was saying, there's the prayer beads there's that you get from killing hard enemies. Then there's like the attack points that you get from fighting enemies and not dying. But then there's also like money, which you buy stuff with. And then there's like your prosthetic arm and then there's like jujitsu and ninjutsu. So for me, there are a few too many like different elements, but I think like the core gameplay is probably like the best in terms of like the combat system. Like I just think it's so clever the way that it's designed. Like most games are like, you know, your enemy's got a health bar. You've got to like just hit them, get the health down you know, they do kind of have stamina built into them, but it's never really something that you can see as a player or that you can rely on too much. Like that, like with the Dark Souls games, you have a stamina bar and so much of the game is like managing your stamina. Uh, and I know the and I know the enemies do have like stamina built into them because if you hit them quite a lot of times then you can like stagger them. But theirs is like so much like disproportion to like what yours is as like the player, obviously to create a challenge. But like, the main part of how you defeat someone is you, you know, you 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 just kill them. You get rid of the health. Whereas like Sekiro, getting rid of health is such a small part of the game. Like I'd say, there's hardly any bosses or enemies that I've fought so far where you rely mainly upon just getting their health down. So because you rely on breaking their posture with like deflects or using your prosthetic arm and stuff like that, and it feels like so much more like an actual fight because you're kind of clashing swords and blocking each other and moving around each other and there's that thing of obviously if you don't if you back off to get some health their posture is going to go back down so that because like like it would do in a sword fight because the person can regroup and i think it's just like so incredibly clever and like the way as well that i said health isn't that important but if you get their health down their posture recovers slower because obviously you would if you're injured you're going to be off balance you're going to be there so i just think it's the kind of reinventing the way every single game of how you play it and just kind of fit it perfectly to the game and as we were saying earlier it's just so satisfying when you like nail like Sekiro's combat it's i just think it's like brilliant and that's coming from someone that's not very good at it and as as i said as literally like driven me to nearly quitting the game at some points. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do think... Yeah. I mean, again, I've not played it, but, like, watching it is... Yeah, it, it I think it's cool. I See, I never noticed that your posture, that the enemy's posture takes longer to go down um, when they're injured. So that's, that's so cool, because I never realised that. Like, yeah, I mean, certain enemies, it's more so than others. Um, mm. So enemies that are, like, quite quick um generally like their posture goes like down really quickly so to check so you can't just i mean you can do but it's very hard just to deflect 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 because as soon as they back off they then you know it regenerates like straight away mm -hmm. so you have to go on the offensive a little bit first and get some shots in and that sort of thing um so like lady butterfly is the one where it teaches you that the most um to like get some shots and get her health down so then a posture builds up it's just it's really clever system and there's like logic for it as well like because sometimes with like game mechanics you're like that's just there because they've gone oh yeah. wouldn't that be interesting whereas like i feel with Sekiro, it kind of it spawns from some level of logic in like the real world i was gonna say because isn't there um the, they did it in the last episode of rkg retry that that was available on on, on data recording i suppose but like um isn't there like a, a sort of illusion based boss that you can like sort of like make it far easier for you and it's like normally they might not do that because it's a boss but the game sort of follows its own logic a little bit and it's like fair play like if you can figure it out you can you can do it, nail it sam do you have a no it, do you know what it is yeah corrupted monks the one that you're talking about but um that almost that um, there is an easier way to do it, and I will mention that in my segment that I'll be doing later. Um, but it's the oh. <laughs> it's the corrupted monk, the illusionary corrupted monk. Um, but yeah. yeah, 
But um, just off the back, if you're finished with your point you were making, then go. Um, yeah. There was something. So today in the like research I was trying to do to figure out um, what I'm gonna talk about and shit, I went to our um, the resident channel that we seem to always struggle to pronounce, uh, Varty Vidya. But um, I went to some of his Sekiro stuff, hey. um, and he had a video out which was kind of like um, actually I've got the title of it up here. It's worth a watch. Uh, it's ah i hate this game please don't ask me to do videos on it it's so damn hard um but it's basically it's like amazing secrets but in dark souls bloodborne and um is it actually is it demon souls no dark souls bloodborne sekiro so those three that he's sticking around um and the last one he talks about is about how in the comp the guy who invented not invented but maybe the gameplay designer for sekiro uh, is a guy called yamamura and there's a hint to, so basically because in the I'm assuming when the old Hunters DLC dropped they had Sekiro on the go I'm going to say in terms of like timeline wise so um, the guy who was designing it is a guy called y- Yamamura um, and in the old Hunters DLC in Bloodborne there is a guy who looks like an eastern kind of like almost not samurai but maybe shinobi kind of looking guy in there called Yamamura so that People have speculated how the guy who invented like the 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 kind of like um, the combat system that we've been talking about now, the guy who's kind of like headed all that stuff up. That was the hint towards that, almost like Marvelous Chester was uh, in Artorius when they. Um, yeah, like, I was just about to say Marvelous Chester. Some yeah, people suggest that. Yeah. Have they still ever confirmed if that was? I don't think it's confirmed. No, yeah. but it's like a little Easter egg. Yeah, um, he's, he's marvelous. Chester again. Sorry, you meet him on the way to Artorias. the Artorius boss fight, yeah. and he's got like almost a V Vendetta mask on and like a top. He's got very like Bloodborne esque clothes. Yeah, on. Yeah, I do remember vaguely actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's really cool. But yeah, but that it is cool. Yeah, those whole hints to yeah the the guy who invented this here. It's just uh no, I just thought it was a nice little. Nice little little tidbit there, and then um, it sort of yeah, put, just gave us a bit more info about who kind of invented um, the system for this game as well. Because I imagine it must have taken some fucking phenomenal work, like as a massive part of a team, to actually develop something this kind of. Yeah, because I've never I've never played a game with this kind of combat in it. I'm not surprised. Like I've never seen anything like it. Like I, I played a bit of Neo. I know, like, it's going to naturally get comparisons to that because, you know, Neo was trying to do, like, a Dark Souls um, S kind of game. And, like, I enjoyed it. It's good. Um, and the combat's good in it. Um, but it's very different. It's, you know, very, like, attack based, um, that sort of thing. But, like, Sekiro is just completely different. And the fact that it, it feels like a fast and aggressive game because it's Shinobis and, like, all that sort of stuff, but predominantly you're defending, but then it's that, like, satisfying is the wrong word, but when, like, you all you do is block an enemy, then stagger them, and then you just get a death blow on them, and it's really just savage. <laughs> you know, when you just kind of, like... It, I think it's just a really cool way, and I'd say I like that it feels more like real life, like, because sometimes you're there fighting a boss and you're like... Or like a little crap enemy, you're like why is it taking me like six times to like hit this guy for him to die? Whereas I like with Sekiro that you don't, you can only have to hit him actually once to kill these enemies and stuff. I think it's quite cool. Mm. And then I like as well, like I was mentioning the other set, and like the stealth elements to this game, like because sometimes I can get a bit annoyed by like stealth stuff. Do you know if it goes on for too long or? It's too convoluted. Like with this, it feels quite good. Like that, you. It's obvious in the sections you're supposed to do it in that way, but if it all kind of goes tits up, it's still not impossible to to do it, which I quite like. Because some stealth games, literally, it's like you don't have an option. You have to do it this way, otherwise you're gonna get just wrecked or it, or you fail the mission or whatever. Whereas this kind of goes, well, you're obviously supposed to do it like this. You know, there's grass over here. You can move around. But, you know, if you do just want to run in and mess some dudes up, then, yeah, that's a feasible tactic as well. Go and do that. Yeah, well, there's that whole thing. The fact that you can actually get a hit in on some of these bosses as well. Like, I don't think I've... Like, especially mm. with when it comes to, like, the Dark Souls bosses or Bloodborne or anything like that, the, all them, it's literally just straight up. You get in, you start the fight then, rather than now where you seem to be able to sort of almost 
take a back route and do something like assassinate some, some yeah. one of these bosses. They often feel like um, like sort of Dark Souls and Bloodborne are like more traditional game bosses. Like there's a boss arena, mm. um, and like you know you know there's still boss arenas in in um, Sekiro, but like you know it's like you have a fog wall and it feels very grand. You know the it's like. You don't just walk into it. You just there's like an option. You're like, uh, are you sure you want to traverse through the fog? Do you want to do you want to go through? Um, because then you're going into a boss area like cordoned off for this fight. Um, while Sekiro doesn't do that. Like I think maybe it sort of goes with your point about grounded in reality a bit more. Like in some ways, like you know the idea that you can just walk in on like you know you went you mentioned the boss before where it was in a square and like. I'm assuming you meant uh, the drunkard. I can't remember his name. No, it was. It's oh, like one of the general guys. They're, they're mini bosses, though, aren't they? So there's the main, yeah, yeah, there's there's the main bosses, like yeah. game bosses. So like Lady Butterfly, hmm. uh, Ginichiro. Um, who's the, the guy dude on the that horse? Shouts his name. Yeah. yeah, shouts his name every time, and I still can't remember it. Oh, so you have wait, to Oniwa, Oniwa, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've got his name written down for my set. Wait. Uh, <laughs> so so they're all like so, traditional Dark Oniwa, Soulsy Bloodborne bosses. Yeah. Uh, where you do kind of get the arena, but then yeah, there are these like mini bosses um, that you don't really get in Dark Souls and Bloodborne as much. Or you don't really get mm. them at all. Well, yeah, you... I think that's the cool thing. Like, there's obviously always optional bosses, but it feels like there's yeah, like they're not optional. Like you say, they're on the way to like maybe the main boss, but you have to beat them. Which yeah. it does. It does feel really cool. I, I think. I think as well. Like I saw. I saw the point I'm just supposed to trying to make is that like it feels more sort of. Um, they feel more involved, like is the sort of, like uh, this. I don't know how I'm gonna best explain this, but like you know, like going into like a boss arena that's sort of cordoned off pre. Like, do you know what I mean? Like normally in like Bloodborne or Dark Souls, you might walk into an area, you'll get the intro film, and it'll be like, okay, this boss exists now. Do you know what I mean? Like, um, and then every time you go into that arena after that, if you don't kill them first time, is you know it's a certain area blocked off to the rest of the game. You have to make make this big effort to go. Well, not a big effort. It's pressing A, but you know what I mean. Like <laughs> you've got to you've got to sort of make the choice to go in. While in this one, it's like I don't know. There, there feels very much something um, incorporated with these bosses. Like for example, the Guardian Ape. You could stand there and like there's no fog wall. He's not aggressive from sort of the second you walk like you walk through this wall you have to sort of go near him to start the fight kind of thing um i don't know it just feels like more involved in the story rather than because i do find that that's like something i don't necessarily hold against dark souls or bloodborne like I, it feels very much appropriate but i think it feels less current in those games it feels like you're just there in this world fighting these memories almost and sometimes that is the purpose of the game, but in this it feels very much like you're in they, they exist at this time, you're in the present, you're making and maybe that's again why they sort of went with the choice of making it a fixed playable character and not like your own, because it is just like this character has a direct impact on the world around him. Um I don't know. Sort of just went, went off on my on a tangent <laughs> a little bit, sorry. Who knew to off on your own. Yeah, who knew to get back to the present we'd need to go to feudal Japan. Yeah. <laughs> that's some deep philosophy right there maybe we maybe we're all constantly going to feudal japan in here in, in our hearts <laughs> maybe maybe um but yeah that's pretty much all i had to say i just wanted to say the combat is dope yeah Sam? Yeah, well, it almost kind of seems fitting that um, we first talked about how solid Sekiro is and then the combat system being amazing uh, for then me to undercut all of that by talking about how you can just cheese bosses and not actually <laughs> have to fight them. Um, because there's, there's been... Um, I, don't, I found myself down some rabbit hole of watching YouTube videos about Sekiro, probably from leading from like an RKG recommendation, and it was about how this person had kind of gone through the entire game maybe using maybe not the most conventional way to beat some of these bosses because like i mean i I know from speaking to everyone in here who's played some form of souls born game the 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 feeling of like like we've already mentioned that feeling of victory you get like once you win just the satisfaction from getting that makes all that grinding and time spent 
uh, like beating your head against the wall almost kind of worth it. So um, I just thought it was interesting how some of these bosses can just get done over by things in the environment, which is um, I thought was quite interesting. So I've got basically I've got like a list of five, uh, five bosses quite early game, probably like up to like the middle point of the game because I don't want to give anything to like. I don't want to give anything um, for, like, the end. Um, and so, yeah, when it comes to some of these bosses that people probably struggle quite a lot with, I just thought it was funny how there are certain bosses that you can't... Because, again, just diverging for a second, we've we've all watched the RKG series and prepared to try before that, and the times where they've, like, joked about, oh, boot him off the ledge to try and... like I know they do it with, like, Champion Gundy, where they're trying to, like... They're, they're getting their ass kicked so much by that boss, they're almost like... Just try and get him off a ledge and see if they can do that. Um, which almost segues me into the first boss that I found out that you can kind of cheese your way through, uh, which is uh, Gyoba Oniwa, uh, where you actually can, instead of fighting him at all, as he's doing his big rant that he's shouting his name and talking about owning the castle, uh, you can just fuck up one of those um, like watchtower looking things, jump onto the wall of the castle run along to the edge so you stood on top of on top of the edge of the ledge and he just rides straight off and kills himself. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, so you literally have to you don't even have to hit him once. You can literally just stand at the no top. Way. He rides off the edge. There are other bosses you can do that to by the way, but we haven't we've not come across them yet, so I'm not going to mention them. But um What a big dumb so many bitch. Links. Uh, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can have a look cuz he's got one for everyone, but um the next one that kind of like uh, Wait, he's got you can cheat are you telling me you can cheese every boss there's n- not as <laughs> easily as that there's just basically someone seems to have found a way where either through a combination of just time spamming or using the environment he seems to kill most of the bosses some of them i think he is just a good gamer and is a and i'll give credit to the videos that i was looking at before this but um some of them, I genuinely think they are. He is a good gamer and can just beat the boss easily, so it looks like he's cheesing it. Uh, but that leads me into the next one, which is uh, Snake Eyes Shirahagi. So the one in the Poison Swamp, mm. uh, where essentially, if you get the first death blow by sneaking up, like we've talked about, I mean, that is a genuine in game mechanic that we've talked about and you're able to do. But then as well, you're surrounded by a poison lake. Uh, There is a point where you can just kind of stand at the top and wait long enough and a poison will kill him. And then that's that's it. You just kill it that way. Her. I'm pretty sure it's her. Um, By waiting for the health to deplete to the point where you just jump and get your death blow straight away. Um, Terrible. So, yeah, it seems to take... It takes all the fun out of the actual fighting of it, which is why I don't think I'll be using any of these methods to actually win this game because I feel like it just cheapen it for myself. Um... I just found it mad how some people have actually found some of these these little like tricks to beating these people. Uh, I just want to say that I um I tried this with like um Metal Gear Solid three right. years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of one of the most famous sort of like boss cheeses you can do is there is a boss called the End who is an old man who's a sniper right. and like. It's for anyone who doesn't know, you you have to go through three jungle areas in and like the the battle spreads over three little areas. Um and he is completely camouflaged in this massive green jungle and you have to find him and kill him while he, and it's and it is solid. He's so hard to find. I remember being on it for hours trying to get him. Um but you can actually I, th- I don't know if there's a thing where you can shoot him really early. I think you can shoot him really early on because it's like you see him from far away being wheelchaired into a, a facility and apparently you can snipe him there and then. But the, the, the most famous one is if you, once you start that boss fight, <laughs> if you turn off your PS2 and then change the date to a week forward, he just dies of old age. <laughs> and you go and find, you go and, you go and find him. And I did it. So I played it a second time and I did it that way. The second time playing it. And, um, and I felt so bad because it's really sad because he's like out of all the bosses. You felt like a big man, didn't you? Oh, it's horrible. I felt awful because he's actually quite a nice. Like he's a bit, he's one of these. It's like he's a bit of a likable bot, like bad guy, and he's like he's just like oh, I was really uh, 
I was really thought you'd give me a challenge there and my final fight would be something worthy because I knew it'd be last fight. And he's just like, oh, well, that'll feel terrible. <laughs> he's just, he just dies. He's got a little parrot. I think his parrot's dead sad and all. And it's, oh, it's just a shit show. Yeah. Don't cheat bosses is what I'm saying. Yeah. Don't. Well, that almost kind of leads into this next. But yeah, Sam, carry on telling us how to cheat bosses, please. <laughs> I am. I am. Uh, this isn't, well, the thing is, it almost kind of leads into the next one because undoubtedly, like the whole point with some of these methods that people have are that the developers go in and eventually they'll end up patching some of these. So one of the examples that I assume is going to be patched now, um, because even at the time of the video being made by this guy that I was watching, he was saying like, this is going to get patched. There's no way they're going to keep this as an actual uh, possibility for the game. Um, but it's the blazing bull that you come across where you trigger the fight and you just run along the top of the castle wall and just get to the, the idol and then that's it. He's dead. So um, that one, he was pretty. Com- he was pretty sure that that one got pa- that one was getting patched. So the developers do like take note of some of these, go in and actually make changes. Which I do like the fact that the game's never like it's never like fully complete until you get these like road tests of people actually trying to do these strategies or whatever they are. Um, but that also as well, it seems like a straightforward enough boss. So it seems like a bit of a just bit of a shit time to do that one to be honest i mean did anyone actually have any problems beating the uh blazing ball uh, i i had, a, I had really a few no. i had a few problems like the first few times because mm. i just couldn't really read him and he just kept like smashing, smashing into me yeah. but then once i like um especially with, like the firecrackers and stuff as soon as i because i don't think i'd got them at that point as soon as i got them i was i did him first try after that yeah fair well the the firecrackers play in quite a few of these strategies that bob oh, methods that people i don't really feel like calling them strategies because some of the times it's just just seems a bit <laughs> just seems a bit cheap Cheesy, to be honest yeah so um i think i think the, mate they're going in a wiki somewhere you might as well call them strategies yeah, they're point. definitely getting put in a wiki somewhere <laughs> yeah well right well this next one then does use firecrackers uh and it's actually that boss you mentioned before guff the um the illusionary corrupted monk so we've already mentioned there's a method where if you realize there's an item you can use it like makes the fight a bit easier, um, but there is apparently a way you can just get a death blow straight away, and you seem to have to follow some weird, weird steps to get there. So essentially, you you, you get into where the boss bar appears. As soon as you do that, you run around the side of the boss arena without looking at the boss, uh, and then somehow that freezes its AI and it just stays stood in the middle. Uh, you then come around the back of him throw all your firecrackers till all your spirit emblems are gone <laughs> then you throw fistfuls of ash at him and like it looks like there's an animation where you throw a fistful of ash and you kind of go back a little bit um i don't know if that's like an in- oh you throw a fistful of ash and it makes the boss come forward either way you kind of you move with it to the point where you're backed up against a wall or a pillar and then if you just jump up you get a death blow straight away which it like it almost like it like cheats out the AI of the actual boss, which is <laughs> how how someone figuring Honestly, that out. So I was just staring at it like, why the fuck's it not doing anything? What 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 was how because like how, how, gonna be how would you how would you figure be. that out though? Like I, like the bull one. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like if you were there yeah, yeah, yeah. and you saw like a grapple point, you'd go like, oh mm. cool, I'm up on top of the building now. Yeah. I'm gonna just try running past, and yeah. then you go, all right, well. That's what. Who's like running into the arena, going? I'm not going to look at the boss and yeah. see what ha- make sure I don't see the boss and run round and see what happens. Like, who's doing the, that? That's. I feel like there's that, almost some element of people like because people can like get into the code of get. I mean, that's why people find these like hidden bosses in Bloodborne and shit like that. So maybe mm. someone's kind of had a look at bits, of, but it doesn't really seem like a big boss to do it for. So I don't really get why someone would take that. I mean, he's only got one kind of like death blow to get off him, so you know, just. Mm. fucking have him but sorry Guffy you're going to say something <laughs> no I was going to say it's just like that wouldn't surprise me if someone was just like if I can't see them they can't see, if I, they can't see me if I can't see them they can't see me and they're just like chancing it and just like I'll just run I'll just run around I won't look at them, I'll just run around <laughs> yeah. well it could, it could be for them but I mean the, this last so this is my fifth one out of the list and I've left this to last for a reason because I wanted to ask before I went into this um, how much did people struggle with Genichiro when they were fighting him uh, I did it fairly quickly actually. Yeah, so probably did I, about actually. half an hour. Ah, see, that's, probably less actually. That's good because like, I think I got close pr- pretty early on. I think on my first try or second try, I got him to his 
like second yeah. proper stage where just the lightning and stuff, yeah, and yeah. then. I think it must. It, I probably did it less than like ten times or something like yeah. that. And no time was ever like, "Oh my god, I can't do this." Yeah. I was just the, like the lightning okay, phase. Yeah. The lightning bits actually, I I managed to parry that every single time. I did him. I did the yeah. second stage in about twenty seconds, probably. Fuck it. Yeah. yeah as soon enough. as you know, like as soon as you know how to, I felt invincible. Like, and if you <laughs> like, if yeah, if he the throws power. a few light, if you if you know how to parry the lightning, and he throws a few lightning away, and then you sorted. Mm-hmm. Um, so would you say but it's yeah. more the first stage that could cause a few issues in a sense? No, I, I don't know, because like, if he gets you with the lightning, then yeah, yeah you're screwed. Oh, but yeah. Fair. Well, basically, there was a way... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say, it feels very much like Sam's like, uh, so I've heard it's pretty difficult. Uh, no, it's not that difficult. Oh, well, I mean, the first stage is difficult. No, no, it's not. It, it's not. <laughs> it kind of was what I was leading to, but I mean... I um, need your help. I, I, should, I should have done this no. one first and got it out of the way with... I yeah. mean, it's... No, to be fair, like... I know it. It is like a difficult. Yeah, boss, it's just you two you know are, I mean? are gods amongst men. Yeah. Uh, no, to be fair, I had watched like the RKG episode, so yeah. as soon as you know the patterns and you know how to counter each move, Big then cheat. you know Big that cheat. makes life a hell of a lot easier. That is fair. Yeah, well, the 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 reason why I've seen because I've actually seen this strategy used um, late at a later point in the game. Um, because you do end up coming back to that room, spoilers, but I mean, who knew that you'd end up in Ashina Castle when you're there all the time? Um, <laughs> but you end up in there because essentially there's... So, do you know, like, when you, you first land, um, it's kind of like you, then Genichiro, then Kuro, and then there's doors leading to the rest of the castle, right? So yeah. the way that some people have found a way to kind of, like, basically avoid getting hit at all is as soon as the fart, fight fart, the fight starts, <laughs> um, you go behind the door, and then as soon as Genichiro comes to attack you, you jump out of the way so he's pinned behind the door, and then you just start twatting him constantly, and he can't <laughs> jump to get out of the, get out of that space. Um, and I've seen people. What's well, so he glitch it basically? He doesn't glitch because he still tries to hit you and stuff, but. You can just because he can't get any of his combos off because he's like, like a glitch behind the door, uh, and he can't like jump to the side or anything like that. He, um, yeah, he just, I think that's technically glitching. Well, well that's fine. It's, it's in his code. <laughs> it's in his code to do stuff. It's not breaking that. Um, but yeah, then you just basically twat him up against the wall, and he turns into Lightning Man. Um, but again, like the the amount of time it looked like this guy spent just beating him against the wall. It just seems like it just take all the fun out of actually fighting these. So that is the moral of my segment. Don't use these ways. <laughs> actually fight them. And I, f- feel- I feel like the amount of time you put into figuring these out, you could have just spent yeah. playing the game properly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Doing it. Yeah. And actually feeling like you've actually... Like, recently it happened when I... Um, so in the first play of Dark Souls, I had... Um, I never actually beat Manus because I was like, oh. I did it a couple times and I was like, I can, I just can't see an end to this. I, can, I, I just can't see, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to beat Gwyn, get it over with. Um, but then playing the remaster on the Switch, I was like, nah, you know what? Fuck this noise. I'm going to, I'm going to rinse him. Uh, and I finally did it after a bit. And then that sense of kind of like, like from half a year ago to now to being like, I, d- I did it did it like i couldn't imagine if i just kind of like cheesed him out the way i could have felt as like gratified from doing that so no mm. i don't think when i actually get the game i'll be using any of these methods quote unquote in fairness i am i'm at the point of bloodborne at the moment where you um you meet uh what's his name with gatling gun well the guy on top uh, of old yarnum jura yeah jura yeah with uh yeah with um in old yarnum and um yeah, uh, getting to that point where you're just under the watchtower mm. and there's that, there's like a hunter that's knocking about um, and he's he, he acts very odd. I don't know if he's deliberately acting very odd because like if you go to a certain bit near some ladders, he runs down, tries to get in it on you and then just fucks off back. So I think he's always trying to lure you into another area oh. where there's like hidden crows yeah. and you can get shot by the Gatling gun. Anyway, he was doing my bloody nutting and when I tried to fight him, I just couldn't manage the fact that there was other monsters about him and then also the Gatling gun. So I um, 
I ended up running away on one just to try and get away from him and avoid fighting him at all and just go down some stairs instead. But he hit me, so I fell off. But then he followed me, died, and then I never had to deal with him. So uh, I consider that one for guff. Yeah, you know, that's, that's all I say. I was like, fuck you, mate. That's not you trying to, like, cheat the system. That's just an <laughs> exactly. innocent... Exactly. I was like, if, if it happens by accident, I'm all for it. Who are you to... Uh, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah, I think you can do that with the master in Dark Souls 3 as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, if you run up, aggro him, and then run down the steps and hide behind this little ledge he basically just runs yeah. over the top of you and jumps off and dies didn't I, didn't I do that in our bonfire's boss did you I was, no I think <laughs> did you? you did no, something I, Paul, yeah. I definitely knocked him off I definitely knocked Paul him off Paul did it yeah, yeah I knocked him off as well mm. I think that is the best way to kill him to knock him off but this is literally like you just hide behind this ledge and he jumps over you and jumps off <laughs> Love that. Uh, I've seen, I, I, really, I really like that because that is funny. It's like, especially when the fucking nails yeah. little mini bosses yeah, or something, yeah. where it's just like, God, this guy's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but he's also thick as shit and just yeah. falls Naked. off. So nice one. There's, a, there's another one that Paul <laughs> showed me, which is um, you can get, like, later on in the game, I mean, you could get it straight away, but you need like 20,000 souls to like buy the key. You can get on top of Firelink Shrine and get like an extra Esther shard and all that sort of stuff and a few other things. Um, so he like, there's like a way you can glitch it by like running at this tree, half running up the tree and then jumping. And if you get it right, you like land on top of the roof. And I can't remember if we did it or not in the end. I remember us trying it for ages. I think they patched and him it. just being like, uh, I don't know if they've patched it out or not. I think they not. did, yeah. Didn't they? Um, but we, I can't remember if we actually got up on it on the end or not, but we just spent ages like trying to run up this tree to like get an extra to shard. <laughs> anyway, that you done, Sam? Yeah, cheating don't pay, kids. Do, do the real <laughs> yeah. thing. Oh, that's from Mr. Ha- from Mr. Hardman. Yeah. Oh, and also just credit to the guys. Uh, so there's a guy called Kane Foe and Tyrannicon on uh, YouTube. They were the ones who did the the two separate videos of like cheesing the Sekiro bosses. So uh, yeah, looks They're like the there's, cheaters. There's quite a uh, yeah. dirty cheats. Yeah. Can't down like all their videos have been cheats. <laughs> <laughs> Now, nah, thank you. I'm, I'm going to say thank you for the content that you gave our boy Sam. So That's there you true. go. That's true. Well, it was either that or I was going to look at like a speed running type thing because that thing's fucking massive. Like the whole culture mm. of speed running is just huge. I didn't realize how big it was until I started kind of I, I, speed running. Just, and no hit runs. Is like no hit yeah. run. I've watched like a dart or someone's like, how is he doing can, this? The thing is, how? I can co- I can comprehend it like a speed run. But like no hit run. That's mad. I'm just I, like, could, I tell you what though, I what? couldn't watch one live. No. When people do like no hit runs live, that'd give me yeah. severe anxiety. I watched one. The once. idea of watching that, doing that, and then like if you get hit, I, at, like really far in the game, I oh that'd break me. I, I just that. I, I just cried because the, ima- the amount of times like I've been doing like some gaming footage and then my PlayStation's just not recorded it, <laughs> and I've just got so angry. It's kind of like that, but like times a thousand, and you've got people watching you. <laughs> I watched one, a guy, like, I can't, it must have been Dark Souls 3, and he got, like, a good chunk into the game, got hit, and was just like, right, quit out, start again, here we go. I was oh, just like, God, how are you yeah. not more well, annoyed at this? Well, isn't it, uh, there's, like, a tactic in it, which is you, um, in Dark Souls 1 speedrunning anyway, to get um, one of the Gwyn Knight's weapons that's apparently, like, really good for, like, speedrunning, because it's quite powerful. So you can get to one of those knights quite early in the game where it can be dropped, um, so like they get to him, kill him, and if he doesn't drop it, they just start the run again. That's <laughs> madness. They, and just like keep trying to get it off him because it's like it just improves your run like by obviously a, a good enough amount that it's worth yeah. just starting over if you don't get this drop. It's wild. There's like in the like I, I can't remember if it was one of the RKG people, but like they said there was like a like a a, a no hit run where it's like no hits for all three games in a row. Yeah. So they were like doing, they were no. doing like just a sped, sped up way of like going through the game, and it was literally uh, one, two, three, Dark Souls, and like not taking a single, and like if they got hit in two, they'd have to go back to the start of one. If they, and got, it's like, if they got hit in the final boss in three, back I'd, to one. Honestly, I think I'd throw up if that if I was watching that live <laughs> and that happened. I think I'd throw up. Imagine watching that. It though. feels so sick. Live and him doing the last boss and not being hit. That must feel amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that was. I was gonna say, if not though, I'd be like, you'd you'd probably start cheering like in your own house, wouldn't you? If you're watching it, you'd be like, yeah. yes, he's doing I, it. I I he's cheer watching like RKG in my own house. Like what episodes I've seen. 
Yeah. <laughs> like, I was watching the, like, Shadows of Yarnum one, like, for Bloodborne recently, and, like, obviously it takes them bloody ages to do that. And, like, when he got it, and I've seen that episode several times, when he got it, I was like, yes! <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like sports. Yeah, it's that's like, what I said. Like I feel like it's a sport, it? <laughs> Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's like, reminds me of, like, I did that when England won the Cricket World Cup. I was on a train <laughs> on my own like in the quiet department in the quiet coach like trying to watch it on the crap wi-fi on like the on the 4od app and we won i was just like sat in my chair but obviously i didn't want to shout because i was in the quiet coach but i just like i did like stand up and i was like <laughs> and then like and I sat down again and i was like no one else in the carriage is reacting no one else must be watching this and i had to go and buy myself a beer from the uh from the confectionery <laughs> cart had Calm to. myself down. Had to buy a beer. <laughs> I did. I was all worked up. Uh, anyway, yeah, Sekiro's good. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Yeah, we, need to, uh, we need to finish it. Is where is where I'm at with that right now. Yeah, I need, need to finish to, it. It's, I do find it frustrating and annoying, but <laughs> <laughs> it is but good. It's a good. I ate it, you. but it's good. <laughs> I ate it, but I've just got to do it. Really, it's like heroin, yeah. isn't it? So it's not yeah. good for you, but it's got to keep. Keep getting it in there. <laughs> you be you, man. You be you. All right, so that is the end of the episode. Nice short one, I think, today. I think you say nice <laughs> to see you to see you nice. <laughs> I don't know why I thought you were going to say that. <laughs> no, it's not what I'm going to say. Um, yeah, nice short one. I think we're going to do an episode next week and chat a little bit about um elden ring but there's fuck rings. all to, there's fuck all known about it so that episode's well, gonna be 15 we're minutes long yeah, it's gonna be our <laughs> predictions and and yeah we'll have a think as well like about maybe genres we'd want from to tackle in the future sort of thing um space have a think about that i want a space yeah that's what one. i was just thinking sci-fi <laughs> that would be cool actually um i mean they have kind of done sci-fi aliens in bloodborne yeah true mm. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that. We and um, we are starting a film club where every week we're going to put out a poll of some films, and you guys pick what you want us to watch. Watch it along with us on. Uh, I think we're going to do Friday evenings around eight o'clock. We're going to be watching it, and then on Monday around that time, that kind of day, we're going to be releasing kind of a little podcast where we chat about the film. Uh, so get involved in that on. Yeah, we want some Twitter feedback for that as well. Yeah, our feedback. Uh, so we're watching um, the film Moon uh, this coming Friday. That's um, today. If you today, to when this podcast out, actually. So if you've got nothing to do this evening, 8 p.m., we'll be watching it and kind of putting some stuff online as we do. So get involved in that and watch it with us. Uh, and let us know what you think of it for the podcast. And then we've got a lot of gaming content and other things coming as well, which just, yeah, go and like all of our pages so you can keep up to date on all that. And we'll see you next week. Bye. See ya. Goodbye. Bye.